Okay. So let's uh let's start with breathing as usual. Um as big or small as you need to. Inhale, reach it out and up. And exhale, letting go. Inhale, letting the air just come into your body. And then on the exhale, letting the air go out. So as effortless as possible, filling up, opening up, reaching, and then exhaling. I mean, it's your body's moving, but effortless in the lungs or in the, just letting it fill and then letting go of that breath. Inhale, filling up, opening up, lifting up, exhale, releasing, two more, inhale, open and exhale, let it go. And last one, inhale, open it up and exhale, let it go. From here, we're just gonna internally and externally rotate our hands. Uh, really simple movement, but getting the fluid and the tissue to have this ringing all the way up into our rotator cuff. I'm already too hot. I don't know how that happened. It's pretty cool up here. It's like 59 degrees when I woke up this morning. Internal rotation, external rotation in the hands. And then imagining that that internal and external rotation in the hands is going down into your pecs, into your lungs, into your heart. So you're getting all this movement of the heart, pecs, and lungs without doing a whole lot of movement. Diaphragm. And then letting that go. And we're going to, we're going to do the lymph flush. So that was kind of like a tissue prep to do the lymph flush. Go ahead and rub your hands together and uh, taking your right hand up to your left collarbone. You're going to go above and below the collarbone, just moving that around. And you can also move underneath if that feels good. So this is a lymphatic flush to help detoxify your body, help getting the lymphatic fluid flowing. And this is where all of the lymph returns. So if this area is blocked, it's gonna be problematic. So this is the first pathway to clear on the return of the lymph into the bloodstream. Switch it to the other side. You can turn your head from side to side. When our tissue gets, uh, when we're not moving very much and our tissue is kind of sitting there and our fluids are kind of sitting there, we don't, we're not having as much oxygenation in our body. The blood doesn't get a chance to, oh, there we go. The blood doesn't get a chance to move through as easily. And then also if the blood isn't moving easily, the lymph isn't moving easily and things get a little stagnant in there. So we want the stuff to move through taking your hands behind the angle of the jaw. So right where that angle is, just getting under there. Very gentle and soft in there. This is also close to where the, the, the lymph from your brain is coming out. And, and your, uh, if you take it a little further back, close to your vagus nerve, which is a down regulator. Ah, so letting go, maybe making some sound, hmm. humming, hawing, haw, letting go of tension, tension masks sensation and tension stops flow. And if things aren't flowing, then we're just not getting the nutrition and the oxygen into our body that we, that our tissue and our organs need. Ah, let it go, turn your head from side to side, relaxing your face. Let's do the one in the face too. So there's more than one, but this is just a good one to do right here next to your nose, just above your nostril, a little circle in there. And you can squish up your face, move it around, just encouraging movement under there. Squish, open, looks really good. Practicing all your sexy faces or your attractive faces. Ah, yeah, and then you're gonna take your hands and just go under your cheekbone. Little pull, gentle, not super hard. And let's go up from the edge of the nose, gentle, 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 up towards just under the ridge of your eye. Doesn't have to go all the way out to the edge, but it could. 
and shake that out. Relax your face, rub your hands together again. And let's just get into the hair, all the 10 little dragons running through the forest. Giving your cranium and your hair follicles a little uh, attention. Just giving me my hair, which was started out looking really good, is now looking even better, I can see. Just getting in there. And you can also kind of take the flat of your hand. So it's like this on the tissue and move it in, on your head, like sort of bigger, getting all of that movement around your cranium. And we may think that, oh, I'm just moving on top of my cranium, but this kind of movement is going to affect inside as well, right? In a good way, just opening up energy and spaciousness. Shake that out. And let's come into K27 points just underneath your uh, edge of your clavicle. There should be a little indentation circling around in there in either direction, go in whatever direction feels good to you. I know sometimes people say go both directions, but to me, it's really clear that one direction feels good and the other one not so good. So do what feels good, breathing into it. Ah, feeling your rib cage, lungs, chest cavity moving. And then let's do a little Tarzan. Oh, make some sound with that. So you're getting the vibration oh, on many levels. Oh, and then right hand to your left armpit. So this is armpit pec getting in there, lots of lymph nodes. So we're doing kind of a mixture of some energy work or some sort of Qigong work, some lymphatic stuff from Perry Nicholson. And I've seen this also from other people. He's not the only one doing it, but he's the one that I learned about it from. And he does a lot of teaching on the fluids of the system and really how to keep them moving and pumping. Or pumping is, lymph doesn't have a pump. It, it moves through movement and breath. Switch your hands to the other side. But we could also say that the pumping of the heart is pumping a lot of fluids around our body, not just blood. Like the movement of that pulsing is helping things move. And so that's why we want our uh, the, the energy of our heart all the way out to the edges of our body, to our fingertips, to our toes, tip of our nose, crown of our head, that this energy is moving through this big pulsing, no blockages. And then we're gonna come in and go under, Here's the edge of my ribs. I'm just going to do a pull along that edge of my ribs. And I'm kind of sticking my fingers in and hooking and pulling. Very, it doesn't, it actually feels good to me, but it might feel kind of um, like it's slicing through. And if that's the case for you, that means your tissue is tight. But this is actually a stroke that I learned from connective tissue therapy, which I studied in my 20s. Good, shake that out. And we're gonna to go to Cisterna Kylie right there. Belly button, xiphoid process right in the middle. And I'm gonna kind of push in and up and I'm gonna let myself go over that. So pumping into that Cisterna Kylie, biggest lymph node in your body, giving it a pump maybe 10, 20 times. Finding your breath with that. If we start to slow down the exhale, extending the exhale, we'll be dropping down into a more parasympathetic state. That's the rest and digest, soothe and settle. Good, let that go into your inguinal fold, just above where you fold your leg between your pubic bone and your hip bone, getting in there, lots of lymph nodes in there. Go on the Google A and look at a picture of your lymphatic system at some point and just see what that looks like. And then relax that, shake it all out, bounce, 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 let it go. Just let your arms relax, let everything be easy. And the last place, just behind the angle of the knee, right in here, I kind of do a circling with the my finger like this, like kind of.
and then let's come up and spiral. So spiraling from side to side, twisting. I'm going to do a flex and look over my shoulder. So this is a weight shift, twisting and spiraling. <sighs> Breathing. And I'm getting a little hit with my hands, right? A little hit on my body. Also encouraging the flow through the centrifugal force. And then coming in, we're gonna change it. Just stay evenly on both legs. So the spiral's really going up the middle, up your central channel. Ha, ah, relax your face. Be as relaxed in your face, neck, and jaw as possible. Hmm. No extra tension. Feeling that spiral from your tail up through the crown of your head. And then let's take it down to the floor. Um, I am going to grab my weights and just have them nearby. Everything is shoved here in between the couch. The couch is my tripod between the couch and the coffee table, not coffee table, whatever, side table. This has to be safely stored away so that Squeaky Beaky can't eat it any more than he already has. All right, let's come in and just easily roll from side to side, rolling your whole body. So you're letting the tissue get compression as we move across it. And that's just gonna also invite in more flow. When the compression releases, it's like, ah, we're fluffing our inner tissue. Relaxing, pouring yourself from side to side. So really easy. Try and leave your head on the floor, surrendering into the ground, letting the gravitational pull of the earth massage you between the weight of your body, the fluid in your body and the gravity. You're getting this nice massage inside your body, pouring around. And then let's come back to center. And let's just do a push up and down with your legs, releasing your spine. So we have an, we had a side side pattern. Here's an upper versus lower pattern. Relax your head and neck, relax your jaw, relax your tongue. It's not that when we're going about our day, we want our tongue like kind of hanging down in our mouth. We actually want it nicely nestled up against the top of our mouth. But as we're doing this, we also, we just wanna try and relax some tension in our throat as well. And then come in and we'll do the lower body spiral, opening and closing, really relaxed, letting this massage through your hips and butt. I, a lot of people that I know have pain in their hips and lower back. If you get down on the floor, at least once a day and roll around, you will decrease that pain. I feel pretty certain of that. That's what works for me. And we're meant to be, you know, kind of getting down to the ground more often. Like we, we built these houses and these chairs and all this stuff so we stay away from the ground, but it's good for us to be down here mobilizing ourselves on the floor. If you need more padding, get more padding. Let's take our hands on our knees and circle. Change direction. An indicator of health is how easily you can get down and up from the floor. And then taking your hands behind your head, cross body going one, Two, reaching it out, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's take the legs up, flex your feet, pointing down one, flex up, two, three, long legs, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're gonna do one more kind and that is with your knees in, touch and just reach out and then come in, touch and reach out. 
come in, touch, reach, in, touch, reach. Really working across, see if you can get your elbow all the way to your knee. If not, just aim it at it. Four more. Three, two, one, and relax. Turn your head from side to side, let it go. Move my weights. And we're gonna do big arm circles, but let's start with the heel rock first. So digging your heels into your mat. Let this ripple up and down your body like a wave. Encouraging the movement, encouraging fluidity, encouraging release. So we're not driving the car with the brakes on. And then taking the hands down past your hips as if you're pulling on a shirt or taking off a shirt. Inhale, open. Exhale, up. Inhale, long body arms over your head. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, one more, exhale, inhale. And then we're gonna change the direction, but let your head and neck release for a second. First, just turning your head from side to side, encouraging your muscles in your neck, shoulders and jaw to be very easy and relaxed. And then arms over your head, deep breath in, exhale. Coming up, inhale, open. And then just going up like a quarter of the way, just past my shoulder blades. <sighs> Inhale, open. Exhale. Big arm circle, letting this massage out your shoulder blades as you're moving your arms. There's all sorts of stuff that I'm hitting. It's my mat. <sighs> Last one. And come in. Relax it down, relax your head, turn it from side to side, let it go. Easy and loose. And then wiggle your body from side to side, like wriggle around, free up your spine. So we did this, right? The heel rock going up and down, kind of upper versus lower. Same sort of thing, but sideways, wriggling along the floor, freeing up your spine, wriggle, wriggle, wriggle. Ha, ah, relax your guts, relax your belly, let go. Oh, I just feel like laying here for the rest of the class. Like, oh, we're just going to relax today. But we're not. We're going to do exercise. This is not the somatics class. So let's take, let's just do this with our arms over our head. Deep breath in. And on the exhale, pelvis presses up. Inhale, float it down. Exhale, press. Inhale, lower. Exhale, push. Inhale down, exhale, press it up. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up and stay there in circles with your hips. Mobilizing your spine, your pelvis. Change direction. Do this with as little tension as possible. Just use what you need to use to go around. So you're not adding tension. And then come in, relax it down and take your knees into your chest, circling your knees together, letting that massage out your sacrum. Feeling into your body, breathing, using your lungs. And then go the other way. Yeah, so I started, we started working on this musical, Ride the Cyclone at Ramapo in New Jersey. We had auditions this week and we've got a rehearsal this weekend. And that means that like my schedule has changed a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna be working a lot harder for the next couple of months. Although it's super fun. Rolling back and forth, rounding through your spine. But what it means is that like a couple of some nights in the week, I am up far later than I would normally be up. So I'm like, hmm, how do I make this work and get enough sleep? Because I like to get up early, but I don't want to get up early if I haven't gotten enough sleep. 
but it's all about adjustment, right? Adjusting to the moment. All right, let's take it onto our backs again. Opening your arms out, spiral, big twist. You can straighten out your legs if you wanna make it harder. And then come in and let's do big circles with your legs, big or small circles. I have a feeling that, there we go. Circling as big or small as you want. I'm gonna flex up and point down. I feel like doing any kind of circling movement with your legs, well, Many kinds of circling movement is really healthy for your hip sockets. But if you're having a lot of popping and clicking, you may want to rein it in, make it smaller, and get a little more precise with the legs. Or you could also, and there's two things you can think about. You can either think about the legs dropping down into your pelvis so that the leg is really connecting in there, or you can think about your leg lengthening out. And you can try both of those to see what works the best for you. Feel free to change directions on that. I think I just did when I went small and then I'm going back to big and I'm leaving my feet pointed. But yeah, if you wanna do the other direction, go for it. Often I don't do the other direction. I just go one way on this, but today I'm going both ways. And relax. Drop it down, open your feet slightly wider than your sticky mat, internally rotate one leg at a time, spiraling in, feeling that spiral through your rib cage lungs, through the upper quadrant. And letting that massage out the hip that you're rolling across. So you're getting that compression and movement in your lower back and the outside of your hips. These exercises are the things that I think that people need to do if they wanna have healthy and happy lower backs. These type of like exercises where you're really getting that internal rotation, massaging through the tissue, and then also spiraling, also working your front, your back, your sides. Like it's a whole thing, right? The whole system needs to be fairly healthy. And that's what this type of mat work does or can do is give you a sort of resilience in your tissue, which means that you heal faster because all of it is getting some movement all the time. Take it onto your side. Let's go leg straight down below. You're gonna internally rotate and externally rotate in and out, in and out, in and out, in, out, in out, in, out, in, out. Keep it out. You're going to go up, toes to your knee, rotate in, rotate out, kick and lower. Up, toes to knee, turn it in, turn it out, kick and lower. Flex whenever you need to. If you're getting crampy in your foot, try flexing and pointing, try eating more bananas, try being hydrated. <laughs> I don't know, electrolytes, whatever it is you need. Four more. Three. Two. Last one. Up, in, rotate, rotate, pick it up, come down. We're gonna take the toe up the knee, hit the floor behind you. You're gonna slide your leg back, keeping it turned out and then turn it in and turn it out. Toe goes to the floor behind your knee, slide it out behind you, rotate in, rotate out. Hit the floor, slide it out, turn it in, turn it out. Hit the floor, slide it out, turn it in and out two more. Take it, touch it back, in, out, last one, back, in 
and out. We're gonna roll that over onto our backs. Keep that ankle crossed over your knee. Draw it in towards you. Breathe into it. Letting go. Melting, breathing into every cell in your body or imagine deep cellular breathing in your whole body. You can also do this with this leg bent. So really work a position that feels okay to you. Adjust whatever you need to adjust. And then release it, both arms and legs up, shake it, shake it, shake it, free up your spine. Shake, 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 shake. And then release, roll over and flip it over to the other side. Gaylord's yowling in there. Gaylord, Gaylord, come here. I don't know what's, what he's talking about, but. Gaylord, come here. Okay, in and out, going one for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you're gonna kick up, toes to knee, rotate in, rotate out, kick it up and come down. Flex whenever you need to. Up, in, oh, Gaylord didn't come in, but Peapod did, hi. Up, in, rotate, rotate, up, down, kick, hold, in. Out, kick, lower, up, hold, in, out, kick, lower, up, hold, in, out, kick, lower, up, hold, rotate, rotate, kick, lower, up, hold, rotate, rotate, kick, lower, three more. Two more. Last one. And then slide it up, touch the floor behind you, slide it back, rotate in, rotate out. I feel the stretch a lot in the front of my abs. Also, we want like the movement differentiated sliding and gliding movement between the different layers of your abs. So that's not all gummed up so that our rectus abdominis, our internal and external obliques and our transverse abdominis, the deep corset layer have the capacity to move against each other, right? People wonder why they're not flexible. And one reason is because tissues are not moving right? They're getting stuck against each other. They're not sliding and gliding. I'm totally not counting. I think we're done with this. I wanted to do six. I'm going to do one more. Roll it onto your back. Draw it in. So there's a few reasons. Like you could be kind of adhered inside and that can make, and often like when we get an injury, there's something going on there that isn't super healthy. Like there's some kind of pattern in there, some kind of adhesion or some kind of lack of fluidity or whatever. Or just lack of integrity, lack of strength. And so also to have that tissue integrity, we need to be eating the right kind of foods, um, drinking enough water, but not super duper drinking water, drinking good water. <laughs> and I think water that's been sitting in plastic is not the best water, right? Really, it's hard to know these days what our best water is, our water choices, since we're not going to the river to get the water internally rotate again. Same thing on the side, just massage out your hips, let that tissue get that internal spiral. But also sleep, you know, not having a ton of like, anxiety in our relationships or in our work life, rolling from side to side, letting that massage out your lower back and then folding it in. And let's come onto our, let's come onto all fours. I got my weights, I got the block out and so far we haven't used anything. 
Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Let's open the hands wide, circles with the chest, heart, and lungs. And then change direction, scapulum moving on your back. Arms pushing the floor away, scooping up in the top, dipping down at the bottom. And then let's come onto our hands and knees and let's go opposite arm to leg, out, fold it in, reach it out and come down. Out, in, out, down, out. If you wanna make it easier, add no cat cow. So it would just be out, in, out. It's a little harder with more movement. Make it work for you. This is an upper versus lower and contralateral pattern. So double whammy. Head tail activity, breath support. Last one. Good, and let's come, oh, I wanna do this. So this is, helps me a lot for my knee rehab. And that is coming up onto your knees. If this hurts you, don't do it. but if you can, you're gonna come like you're gonna sit, press it back up. If you need to make it easier, lean your body forward. If you wanna make it harder, take your body back. And I like to do all of the versions, of course. If you're strong and flexible, you could take this back pretty far, maybe all the way down to the floor. <laughs> Let's say also if you're young, strong and flexible, if you've been doing this for a long time and you're older, like if you're a yogi, then maybe you can do it. But, and I used to be able to do it, but I can't do that right now. All right, let's take our hands to the floor, curl our toes under, butt to the ceiling, downward dog, walk through your feet, just bend one knee, bend the other. And then from here, I'm gonna open my feet a little wider, opening my hands wider, knees are bent. I'm just gonna circle around, wrist, ankle, ankle, wrist. Shifting my weight from limb to limb. And then change direction the other way. And then coming in, walk it in, lifting your heels high, scoop your belly in, round your spine, roll it forward into a plank, bind your plank, drop your head, roll it up to the ceiling, lower your heels. Heels high, hollow your belly in, round your spine, rolling it forward into a plank, head drops, push, roll it up to the ceiling, lower your heels. Heels high, scoop, round, roll it forward, Find it, drop your head, push to the ceiling, lower your heels, lift, roll it forward, drop your head, push. Last one, you're gonna come all the way forward, lower it down, 10 counts if possible, going slow, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Settling into the floor, bend your knees, let your legs fall from side to side, massaging out your hips, or sorry, massaging out your quads, releasing your hips, relax your feet. And then we're gonna take our hands next to our chest, baby cobra, now hands, inhale up, exhale down, using your breath. And keep going up, touching into the floor. Big breathing. Last one. Up, bend your knees. See if you can touch your toes to your head. 
and then take it back into a child's pose. Wiggle around, free up your spine, let go. You can push down into the floor with your arms and then retract your shoulder blades, drawing them down into you and then lift your shoulders up to your ears. Push into the floor with your arms, draw your shoulders down, reach it out, walk it out. Oh, I think this would work better if I was on the other side because of the nap of the carpet. Let's find out. Yeah, well, not really. <laughs> reach it out, reach it out, reach it out. And then shoulders down, pushing into the floor, lifting up. Walk it out, walk it out. Push and lift and come all the way up. Let's go over the back of the hands, making little monkey hands, curling your spine, then try arching it, curling and arching, and then making your hands towards each other and the same thing, arch and curl, or fingers towards each other is what I mean when I say that. One more. And relax. And let's let me check the time. Um, let's do let's do something with weights. Let's go back onto our backs and uh, do a little more abs with weights. So I'm gonna just grab two three pound weights. Coming onto my back, knees together, pigeon toe to knock knee, circling my hands around my body, inhaling open exhaling as I come up again here is an opportunity to move all that tissue lungs sliding against the inside of the ribs so they're not adhering in there getting movement and mobility through the upper body and the back right the back as we're massaging across it as we circle around with the arms Inhaling open, exhaling as you come up. If the weight is too much, if it hurts in your rotator cuff, you could do this with no weight or with something lighter. Really work with what's gonna work for you. Oh, I'm gonna do some stuff that we haven't done in a long time also. I'll just show you from this direction. Evening yourself out. Now we're gonna to come together. I'm gonna to use both weights again in my hands. My legs are together and I'm going to cross and then come back down. So at my upper and lower are both spiraling. And I'm just going a quarter of the way up right now. In a minute, I'll go higher. But I'm spiraling across. Inhaling open, exhaling, twisting. Inhaling up, exhaling, twisting. Coming up higher if you want to. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, spiral. Inhale, open. Exhale. Using your breath. Deep breath in, big or small, either way. Open it up, twist, open it up, twist, open it up, twist, last one. Deep breath, exhale, right? So getting all those layers, you have your rectus abdominis on the top. It's the long one going down. It's your six, six pack. You have your internal and external obliques. I'm not sure which is which, if the internal or the top or the bottom. Then you have the corset, the deepest layer. I gotta figure that one out. At any rate, the obliques are doing helping you do any kind of this type of thing, right? Where you're moving your torso. Also, we want that freedom in our diaphragm right under there. Let's do a side plank with Knees either on or off the floor. We're gonna press all the way up. I like to put one foot in front. You could do it here, but I like to have my balance and be able to really open up my body here. Pulsing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Take it down. 
flip it around to the other side. Elbow underneath you, press it up, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Coming in, back to the first side one more time. This time we are going to leave the bottom knee down, come up. Oh, what do we want to do? Let's just take that top leg up and down parallel, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down, flip it around to the other side. Other side coming up. One, parallel two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring it down. We're going to do one more thing because I just remembered it. I was like, wow, I haven't done this in a long time. I've just been like going over in my brain, like exercises that I haven't done much. When I used to teach a lot of classes in the same day, I brought in a lot more exercises because I was like, I don't want to do the same stuff. But now that I'm not teaching that much, teaching like one a day, once in a while of this class, I'm, I'm not as creative. Top hand is up. You're going to lift and come back down. Knees are bent. One, two, open it up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and come down, take it around to the other side. Onto your side, up and down. One, two, three, four. Let your chest really open on top. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Good. So what we're going to do to release that is roll across it. So just rolling over one butt cheek and then the other, massaging it out, kind of slumping into it so you can really get into, I'm in this sort of rounded spine position to really get into my glute piriformis. And my glute has three sections, right? There's the glute, the maximus, the medius, and the minimus. And if I get onto one side and kind of rock up and down, I can get the sheer slidey glidiness into that tissue, massaging it out. Also like this is connecting up to my greater trochanter. A lot of times when my hips are sore, it's sort of around my greater trochanter. So when I roll around and smosh it out, smash, smosh, smish, it, uh, it helps. Try it on both sides. See if you can get that sheer compression, sliding, gliding, all the good things. Good, and then let's just spiral all the way around, take it down to the floor. Open, chest, heart, and lungs, paint the rainbow, and take it down. Open it up. Open and surrender. Last one, take it down to the floor and let's take, let's, let's do a hamstring stretch. So you could do this with like something around your leg. Like you could use a towel, a t-shirt, a sock, or you could just grab your leg if you're, if you're more flexible, but if you're not so flexible, get something to put there. What we're going to do is we're going to bend the knee and ankle and then extend and point. If you have something, you can wrap your foot around it, pulling in, reaching out. Flexing the knee and ankle, extend, point, and open. Flex it in, reach and stretch. Flex it in, reach it out. Flex, I saw this, I saw something kind of heartening and disheartening at the same time this morning when I was out for my walk. So I was walking along the street and somebody had like a, a pretty big, bird feeder out the front and there's tons of birds out there mostly sparrows 
mostly sparrows and one sort of bluebird in there. I'm like, what is that? And then I saw it was a parakeet. So a whole bunch of sparrows and one parakeet hanging out. And like as cars would come or people would go by, they'd all fly across the street to the other side. Take your knee into your chest. Actually, let's do this first. Cross and open. And this parakeet was just hanging out there. So I'm like, oh, wow. Somebody's pet has gotten free. It can fly. It has found a sort of flock to hang out with. And I just hope it's going to be okay as this air gets colder outside. Who knows? At the same time, I'm sure the value of being able to be free and fly outside in the world is probably pretty high. That's probably a pretty happy bird. Bring it in, cross it over. And then release, pick up your butt, give it a little shake, let your spine realign itself, relax your gut body, relax your everything inside. And then the other leg starting, if you're tighter, leave the bottom knee bent. If you're looser, you can stretch it out really up to you. Flex the knee and ankle, extend and point. So yeah, it's interesting what I see on my morning walks in the bird life around here. Another thing I saw another time was a an albino cardinal, which was super cool. Like it was kind of like almost, well, almost like a, like white with some red. So it was like definitely an anomaly, but really beautiful. So I used to see that one. I haven't seen it for a while, but I'm not always in that neighborhood. They're usually like local to their neighborhood. So hopefully I'll see the parakeet again. Breathing into it, opening up. Picture your muscles and fascia opening together. Like it, you have the release and then the gentle lengthening, release and lengthen. Then let's cross over, exhale and open it out to the side. Crossing and opening, breathing into it. Good, and then fold it in, spiral the whole way, breathe into it, turning your head away from your leg if it feels okay. And then coming back, feet on the floor, pick up your butt, shake it, shake it, shake it. Let's roll back and forth, rounding through your spine. If you wanna come up to standing on that, feel free, I'm not going to. You can also take that, into a plow. Letting this massage out your back. So if we want to change things in the tissue with all this rolling, the slower we go, the more we give the tissue a chance to adapt. Uh, anyway, sometimes we're going to be moving fast, sometimes slow. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Take it into a forward fold. Breathe into it. If you're tighter here, feel free to bend your knees. Yeah, I was teaching kids uh, uh, in the summer camp, and none of them could do a full forward fold. Some of them couldn't even sit up straight. Like we're really failing our youth in terms of movement as a culture. Not that everyone needs to be able to do a, you know, a, a total fold, but like just to be able to sit on your sit bones, that's really important. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I've always thought if we taught movement, not gym class where it's a competitive sport, but movement, like how to move better, but even adults don't know that very much. So what can I say? Let's take it into a forward fold, standing on our legs. And it's not just like just yoga or Pilates, or it's not that there's one thing that's the right thing to do. We got to do a mixture of all of it. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Different movement systems do different things for our body. 
taking it in. That's why I'm a maximalist. That's why like for me to be feeling good in my body, I got to do a lot of different things. Not, and this is, this is the ground, you know, insurance policy. This is the ground foundation. And then like from there, I can do a million other things and not get injured or, or heal quickly. If I get injured, inhale open. Sometimes if we start moving and we haven't been moving a lot, or sometimes if like we're doing a lot of repetitive movement, we might get injured. So we want to find ways of recovering quickly. And that means like really dialing down, resting and digesting, soothing and settling, letting your body heal. But doing that doesn't mean doing nothing for most people or for me. Like it's never a stop moving. It's no, it's adjust what you're doing so that you can keep moving. Tissues tend to heal faster. I'm not talking about illness. I'm talking about injury. So if you're sick and you need to lay in bed, then you need to lay in bed. All right, let's just do a quick spiral. But even like, a, you know, on a hip surgery, they have those patients up and walking that day or the next day, right? Even when people have these massive things done to them, it's uh, we got to move. That is part of our life force. Alrighty. Ooh, I got somebody watching. Thanks for joining us. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you ever want to be in the Zoom room because we talk a little bit before and after. And I am going to end the live.